Hi, Trish here with Divine Journey Yoga. Welcome. Today we are going to practice Hatha Yoga. Should be pretty gentle. We're going to move the spine in seven directions and do a little meditation on the seven chakras as well. If you enjoy these videos, please continue to like and subscribe. You can turn on notifications for when I post new videos. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's just reach out our arms really wide as you're sitting here today. Oh, that's so beautiful. Lift the arms up in the air, bring the palms together and slide them down to your heart as you come into your own body, sitting up, breathing deeply. I love to take those first few clearing breaths in through the nose and out the mouth. Smile a little bit as you make your way down onto your back where we will do our chakra breathing meditation. And you're gonna have to use your imagination for this one. So laying back nice and flat, you can always put a blanket or pillow under your knees to help release some of the low back tension. I do like to have a low blanket under my head sometimes depending on what my floor is like. As you lie back, just do that again, that in through the nose, out through the mouth breath a few times, just starting to settle into your body. Smiling just a little bit, that little curve of the corners of the mouth feels so nice. Your arms can rest wherever you like. Sometimes it feels good to have a hand on the belly. And what I'd like to do is guide you to focus mentally on different parts of your spine. So we'll begin with the base of the spine, the tailbone. As you breathe in, imagine that there's a ball of light there and your inhale lifts it slightly away from the floor and your exhale lets it drop closer to the floor. And this is what we'll do with each of the chakras, the tailbone, let's do that one more time. This is the root chakra. Inhale, lift it up and exhale, let it drop. And this is just in your mind, just imagining this, this ball of energy. Move up into your sacrum right below your navel, maybe even a little lower, a ball of energy there. Inhale, let it lift and exhale, let it fall. Good. Moving up right above the navel to our core. Inhale, let the energy rise and exhale, let it fall. Moving up into the heart chakra. Inhale, the center of the chest, let that energy rise and fall. And then the throat, imagine that ball of light here. Inhale, let it rise. Exhale and fall. Let's keep going. The third eye right in the center of your forehead. Inhale and exhale. And then finally, the very crown of the head. Inhale and exhale and let that go. Just take a few deep breaths, imagining that your breath can move up your spine from your tailbone to your crown like a straw, pull the air up and let it push back down out through your perineum, down right at the base of the spine. Do that a few times. This is a nice clearing mental energy breath, just evening out the energy along the spine. I love these really short affirmations that I found. The base chakra, that root again, if you'd like to inhale and say to yourself, I am, that's our root. We are grounded in that. And then as you move up into that second chakra area, creativity, that is the I feel center, your emotions. You can breathe in and out and say, I feel. And you can move up around the belly button a little higher. This is our place of strength and purpose. This is I do. This is our moving forward into the world. And then the heart, of course, is I love. Feels good to even put your hand on, a, on your heart there, breathing in and out again. I love. Mm. And then the throat chakra, of course, is I speak. As you breathe, saying that to yourself. And then the forehead, that third eye, the affirmation there is I see with wisdom and intuition. And then finally, that crown chakra, I understand. That's a beautiful affirmation there. 
And that is our opening meditation. Go ahead and start to wiggle your fingers and toes and let those ideas kind of seep into your practice this morning. Thinking about what part of the spine really resonated for you. What part were you thinking, oh, that's a hard one for me, or yeah, that's easy for me <laughs> to think about or feel. Go ahead and bend your knees if you haven't already and let them rock a little few times side to side. Just enjoying this gentle movement. You can keep wiggling the fingers, maybe twist the wrists a few times. We're gonna do the seven movements of the spine, which really turn into more like three general categories. But there's a fourth one when we extend. Let's do that together. Extending the legs down the mat, taking the arms over the body. This is our first spinal movement extension. Maybe point and flex the feet a few times. Get those heels lifting off the floor a little bit. And then when you're ready, we're gonna roll up in a ball. This is the second movement of the spine, the curving forward. And you can lift your head if that feels good. Those of us with osteoporosis or osteopenia wanna do very gentle curving. No curving when seated or standing. The safest place for the people with soft bones is their spine or hands and knees. So take another deep breath, pull yourself into that little ball again, and set the feet down on the floor, rock the knees. We're going to move into our side stretch. Take the legs out nice and long, scoot the feet together over toward one edge of your mat, but watch out, don't let your back roll off the floor. Keep it nice and flat. You're going to get a side stretch here. You can take the arms up and curve the hands over toward that same edge of the mat as your feet. So you turn into a banana shape on the floor and take two big breaths into that outer edge, stretching. This is our lateral spinal stretch. And slide yourself back to center and over to the other side sliding, scooting, kind of feeling your way into this nice opening stretch. Two deep breaths. Walking yourself back to center. The feet step back up on the mat. We're going to begin to lift the hips up off the floor, just nice and slow. You don't have to go very high. I'm gonna lift my hips and squeeze the glutes, push into the knees. Now, if your knees are hurting a little bit, walk your feet further down the mat so they're further away from you. Open up that knee joint. Sometimes it feels kind of good to swing the hips a little in the air, but you gotta stabilize with that core, pulling it in. And then the, the arms work really nice right down by our sides. Let's go ahead and set our hips down for a minute and squeeze our shoulder blades together on our back, kind of tuck them back and under. Now push up again, and you can feel the opening in the chest. You want your head to be flat on the floor so the neck does not get compromised. And try to keep the nose straight up, or if you're turning to look at me, just keep it in one position without moving too much. Take another deep breath or two. This is our back bend. This is our, let's see if I can count, one, two, three, four, five. This is the fifth movement of the spine. And sometimes it feels good to go up a little higher as you're ready to come down. Nice deep breaths. And that leaves two more movements, our twists. Let's take our hands out really wide, open them up, stretch them out. Palms facing upward or down. I like mine to face up. I'm going to push into my feet and scooch my hips over to the right edge of my mat and then bring the knees into the chest and let them rock to the left. And this is our knees over twist. It should give you a big stretch of that side of the hip. Your knees can go anywhere that they feel good to you. They do not have to be on a 90 degree angle. Another deep breath or two, reaching wide with your arms. And then rolling yourself back onto your spine, scooting the hips back to center. Take a moment, maybe rock a few times or pull the knees in before you try the other side. Using the feet on the floor to help scoot the hips to the left. This time the knees rock in to the belly and roll over to the right edge of the mat. 
Oh, reach out with those arms and breathe and sigh to yourself. <sighs> One more breath here. And then rolling yourself to center again, scooting those hips back to the middle. Let's pull the knees in. We're back to number two of our stretch, right? This is our curving forward. And we're going to roll on over to one side and push ourselves up into a seated position for those seven movements once again. I'm going to sit up on my blanket as I like to do. I want to recommend that always for your low back. And I'm going to sit crisscross. My legs tend to go there now after a while of doing yoga, but you don't have to sit crisscross. Sometimes it feels better to have soles of the feet together, one leg in, one leg out. We're going to do the seven movements with one leg in front, one leg position, and then we're going to switch it and do them again. So let's start with this opening up of the heart again, wide arms, kind of Roll into those shoulders a little bit. <laughs> Feels pretty good to roll the shoulders with the arms out wide. Take a deep breath as you send your hands slightly back and your heart slightly forward. This is our arching movement of the spine. Inhaling here. Exhale and wrap your hands around your body. One arm on top, look down to see which one it is. You can drop the shoulders to round deeper. If you have osteoporosis, you're gonna to wanna to keep your spine fairly centered and not go too deep here. On the next inhale, open wide, send the hands way back. And then breathe in again. And cross and hug yourself up again. <sighs> Feels good. Next time we're gonna let the hands rise straight up in the air, twirl the wrists a little bit and drop over to one side. Let the hand come down. This is our lateral stretch. Reaching gently through, maybe turning the palm up and down, and then switching sides whenever you like. Feel that inhale and exhale. Coming back to the arms lifted high in the air, inhale, and on the exhale, twist and let one hand drop to the opposite knee and the other hand float down behind you. Don't pull too hard, just kind of settle into your hips here. Deep breaths. On your next inhale, rise up. Exhale to the other side. And enjoy the twist. So on this position of the legs, we've moved really slowly. Let's rise back up and come straight down the center. You can even bring palms together. Now let's switch our legs. I'm going to switch the other foot in front. If you've had legs wide, you can bring them together, whatever you want to do. All right, now we're going to turn it into a flow. We're going to move with our breath. Inhale, widen the arms and the heart. Exhale, give yourself a hug. Inhale, wide again. Exhale, the other arm on top. Inhale, wide open. Exhale, move to one side. Inhale through center. Exhale, drop to the side. Inhale, rise up. Exhale and twist. Inhale, up. Exhale, twist to the other side. And we come right back to center. We're going to do that one more time. Inhale, arms wide, heart open. Exhale, give yourself that hug. We're moving that spine. They say we're only as young as our spine is flexible. Well, folks, meet some of the youngest people in the world here. <laughs> Coming right back up, dropping side to side. Enjoy your breath. Feel free to close your eyes and move at your own speed. We'll end with our twist. And right back to center. Good, roll the shoulders. 
Bring the knees up and walk the feet over to one side as we roll onto hands and knees. Maybe slide a blanket under your kneecaps. And begin to rock your hips, cat and cow. Here we go again. Arching and rounding of the spine. This is one of the safest places other than this being laying down on the back. This is really safe for our spine, this cat cow movement. But as, it, as with anything, you can actually overdo it. So go slow and notice how it feels to you. See how much you want to get your head and your neck involved. Sometimes it's better to kind of let them follow along for the ride rather than leading the way. Deep breath in and out. And then let your spine neutralize. Let it turn more into a table. It doesn't have to be flat. It can have that little curve in the lumbar spine, a little rounding in the shoulders. As you start to slide one leg straight back on the floor, toes curled under and push into the hips, the heel, feel that stretch. Begin lifting the leg in your own time, rocking the weight a little bit from hand to hand, feeling that core engage, pull the belly in. If you'd like to, you can reach out with the opposite arm Thumb toward the sky, palm flat, reaching, stretching through fingers and toes. This is extended cat pose. Keep the belly pulled in and the breath circulating around the rib, the rib cage. The gaze is down, one more breath, or maybe you're already finished. And we're back to table pose, stretching out the other leg. Let's reach up with the other arm right away this time to twist out that wrist that we were just leaning on and then you can begin to add the leg. So we're doing it backwards on this side. <laughs> Arm is already there. You can always bring that hand back down a few times if you need to. This, is, this should be and is a very wobbly pose. You can kind of rock those hips. And then begin that really big stretch. Enjoy that diagonal opening across the back of the body. Hands down, knees down. Let's take those knees wide apart, sinking toward the heels. If your knees do not like this pose, then skip it. You can stay in table or you can even roll back on your back and pull your knees into your chest for your little child's pose break here. Take a deep, deep breath. And then coming right back up to table. We just need to slide another Asana in here, another pose. Reach back with that first leg again, and let's just cross it over and behind the other leg, and then look over your shoulder at your toes and side stretch. That should feel pretty good. Back to center, knee comes back down, the other leg stretches out, and we cross it over and behind as we look at those toes. And back to center. Now I'd like to either Take yourself to your elbows here to twist out the wrists or sit back on your heels to get a little knee stretch, whichever one your knees prefer. All right, we're gonna do a little flow here. We're gonna kind of put it all together. <laughs> so take a moment, catch your breath. I need to shake out those hands, those wrists. If your wrists are hurting you this morning, I wanna invite you to, there's a lot of different things you can do. The simplest thing is to roll the edge of your mat up a little bit and put the heel of your hand right on that edge so that there's a diagonal in the wrist. The other thing that is really safe, usually pretty safe, is to use blocks under the elbows. And you can do the flow here with maybe the hands linked together. Lots of things you can do for your wrists. You can also curl the knuckles under, but I don't want you to stay there very long. That's hard on the knuckles of the hands. Okay. Back up to table pose if you're ready. We're going to stretch out the right leg, slide those toes back, reach back, rock a little bit forward and back here. Lifting opposite hand and leg, lift that leg up, we're moving into extended cat. Take a deep breath. If you'd like to, you can draw elbow and knee together and let them bump right in the middle underneath you. And then place the hand back on the floor as your leg reaches out and crosses over and behind and you're looking over your shoulder. <laughs> and right back to center, bring that knee back, and let's try the other side. So we're sliding the leg back first, then we're reaching out and up with arm and leg. That arm is optional. 
Maybe elbow and knee float together and tap. And then the hand softens down to the floor as the leg reaches back and crosses over and behind and we look over that shoulder. And come on back to center, knees down. Good. Want to try it again? <laughs> All right. Right toes curled under, slide them back. Lifting the leg, maybe the opposite arm, extended cat. Inhale here. Exhale, knee and elbow tap. Opposite knee and elbow, good. Inhale, reach out, and then let the hand come down as you cross the leg over and look over your shoulder and come back to center. Knee down, slide the other leg out behind you. Begin to reach out with the opposite hand. Extended cat, lift the leg. Exhale, elbow and knee tap. Reach out. Hand down, toe crosses over. Shoulder stretch, good. And back to center. Perfect. <laughs> All right, three times a charm. I think I just made that up. We're gonna do it one more time. Sliding leg and arm out in, extended cat, deep breath in. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, reach it out. Exhale, hand down, toes cross over. Good. Inhale, back to center. Knee comes down, good. That's your exhale. Inhale, reach out, extended cat, opposite hand and arm. Exhale, knee and elbow tap. Inhale, long. Exhale, hand down, cross over the toe. And we'll look out behind you, good. And inhale, back to center. Let's all come down on our elbows and give those, those dear little wrists a break. It's actually really good for our wrists to have that weight on them because they can be susceptible to osteoporosis. Take a breath here. Let's do a little twist. We haven't done a twist yet here on our knees. We're gonna take one hand behind the other elbow. This is our forearm twist. We're reaching out with that forearm. We're resting on the other forearm. We might drop the head and shoulders down toward the floor. You don't even have to go all the way down and you can kind of rock those hips. Stretching and enjoying that spinal twist. One more deep breath. And then back to center and try the other side. Right back up. Hands on the mat. Good. And we're just going to do one quick flow here for our hips. If this sounds good to you, I'm going to widen my knees a little bit and shift the hips back. Take a hand print forward so I get a really long stretch on the spine, good. And then when I lift hips and shoulders, they rock forward and drop those hips toward the floor. This is our back bend, good. And you might need to go just a little, you might not wanna go all the way. Rocking and enjoying this lengthening of the spine. Enjoy the breath. Close your eyes and just move. If this hurts your wrists, you can just do it on your elbows. Rocking up and down. We're gonna take our time finding a down dog or maybe stepping forward from table pose. We're gonna come into our forward fold, standing up. Take your time. Just enjoy the journey here. <laughs> You know, people say it's really the journey and not the destination, but I heard something recently that said it's actually both, and I totally agree. They're both really important. So I'm gonna take that blanket off my mat as I'm just really deeply bending the knees and letting the belly flatten on, the, on those thighs. Take your time here. Elbows can slide onto the thighs to support the spine a little more. And then hands to the thighs, we push up. Flat back, no rounding, please. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. Lift the arms high in the air, good. And then turn sideways on your mat and just swing yourself side to side. You can rock the hips, the heels, side stretching. Nice deep breaths. You don't have to hold your hands together. You can let them wave like branches in the wind. Good, so here we are doing our lateral stretch for the spine, side to side. Let's bring our feet about a fist's distance apart. 
hands really high, pull the belly in and tip to one side, feel the weight of the arms and then drop the outer arm down to the thigh and maybe go a little deeper, keep the belly pulled in really strong here. Lift that arm back up, tall and lean to the other side and drop that outer arm, good. Rising up, the arms go wider and wider and wider and we can even squeeze them onto the low back. Kind of push them there onto the low back. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Get a little belly push forward. Shoulders might drop back a little bit. This is our back bend standing up. Good. Deep breath into the chest. So good to open that fascia there. And then relax and let the hands kind of settle on your hips. Roll the shoulders a few times. We're going to do a little twist. So I'm stepping my feet wider than my shoulders just slightly. It's just the outer edge of the shoulders there. And I'm just gonna turn only from my waist up. I want my knees and my hips to stay forward pointing so I don't turn them too much. Stretch that shoulder back, take a breath, watch your neck. If you're dropping it forward like I am, let's pull them back right over our shoulders. And slowly find the other side. and turn into center. Good, shake out the hands. I'd like to do a one-legged balance, but with a block or of course with a wall nearby always. I wanna do the seven movements of the spine in tree pose this morning, if we can. <laughs> now, as soon as I say tree pose, you should start calculating for coming in and out of the pose. You're gonna be wobbly because it's a one-legged balance. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> I actually love this saying, it's a Buddhist, uh, saying that you're perfect just the way you are and you could use some improvement. <laughs> so here we go into our one-legged balance. I'm going to put one foot on the block and just one leg nice and tall and one hand is touching my support here. And then the knee opens wide and I'm going to walk the heel right into the inside of the calf or the shin there. Now for anyone who would prefer you can actually have your foot on the floor or you can grab your foot, put it up high on your thigh. Just don't push the heel right into the knee joint, okay? All right, now first our tall length. Lift that arm up high, full extension of the spine, and let yourself fall in and out of this pose, okay? Compassion always, no beating ourselves up. And then we're gonna take the hand in front of us and reach forward and let the spine curve just a little bit, not much. The knee is still wide, good. Lift up and lean slightly back. This is our back bending in this position, good. And then back to center. Take the arm that's in the air and curve it over toward the bent knee side of this pose. Over toward the hand that you're holding on to something with. Okay, good, big breath. Rising up, lean away from the knee. This is harder on the core. You should feel a stretch on that side of the body is connected to the knee there. Right back up to center. This is the fun part, you guys. I'm gonna twist by taking the hand and crossing it over to the hip or the thigh connected to the bent knee. And I'm kind of turning, curving, twisting here, maybe looking over my shoulder. And then the arm swings out really wide and goes back behind me as far as I can reach. I might even touch the wall or a chair. I might even switch hands. Deep breath in the twist and back to center, hands to the heart, and step down. Woo! I don't think we've ever done that before, you guys. <laughs> that should be pretty challenging, standing on one leg, falling and wobbling a little bit. And our balance is a little bit different every day. It, it reacts to the barometric pressure in our, in our land. <laughs> it, it reacts to how much sleep we've had, what we've eaten even, our eyes, our ears, everything. So I'm setting up the other side here, coming into knee wide position. Strong standing leg, but not a locked knee. Just a little bit of able to unbend that knee if I need to. Arm rises up. First we extend, lift, pull the belly in. And then we're gonna lean forward slightly. It's as if we're a ballerina here. This feels like a ballet <laughs> reach. One big breath and then rise up and lean way, way back. 
when I say way, way back, I don't mean all the way back because I can't go very far either. And to center, curve over toward the bent knee, side stretch. Try to keep the shoulders stacked. So we're not leaning, leaning forward here. And then outer edge, reach to the other side. Good, and you're gonna maybe move the hand you're holding. Good, ah, oh, good side stretch. Back up to center. And the twist, we move first over toward the bent knee side. Deep breath. Try to keep the hip open and then open it back behind us and see how far we wanna go. It's hard to breathe, but take a big one. And relax back to center, heart and hands together. Stepping down, swinging hips. And just pause for a moment. Let's push that block out of the way. Coming back into the center of our mat, maybe turning toward the top edge. Take that forward fold, gentle leaning, flat back, deep bending in the knees. Just slowly moving into your chair pose here. We have moved our spine in so many beautiful ways. Take another breath. We are going to make our way down onto our bellies from here. So we're gonna slowly touch down, knees stepping back. You can take a down dog, a cat cow, maybe even a child's pose if that sounds good. And then start to stretch yourself out nice and long on the mat. Nice deep breaths. Maybe rock the hips a little bit. Just notice how it feels to be flat on the floor. <laughs> ah, okay. So there's a lot of back bending that we do here on our belly. So we're not gonna get much of a forward fold. We'll move into that at the end of the sequence. So reaching out long with your arms in front of you. Get that nice extended spine. Make yourself really long. You might even walk your legs a little ways down the mat. Really extending that spine. Every extension of the spine in yoga helps add openness to the vertebrae and the little pads in between. Take a big belly breath here. And then just begin to lift one of your legs up off the floor. Just one leg, push into your pubic bone, your hip bones, your belly, and then maybe start to lift the opposite arm. Deep breaths, squeezing that core. Relaxing arm and leg down. Start to lift the other leg. Keep breathing. Add the opposite arm if you like. And relax. Good, let's do both legs together. Push into the floor, right into the pubic bone. Lift the knees, lengthen the legs. You can begin to add the arms if you like. I actually like to take them out beside me like wings or cactus. Helps open that chest a little bit. One more breath and soften all the way down. Good. I'm gonna turn my head to the right so that I can start to slide my knee to the right. My right knee to the right here. <laughs> my knee is sticking straight out from my hip and my shin is coming pretty much straight down from the knee joint. So I've got two 90 degree angles. This is our half squished frog. And I wanna add a little side stretch to this. So I'm gonna start to scoot my shoulders and my head over toward that same right edge of my mat. You can be doing your left edge, of course. And then my foot that's way down the mat, I'm gonna kind of lift the leg and walk it over so that it's stretching sideways as well. So my whole body is curving in the direction of that bent knee and I'm getting that edge of my body stretched there. Everything should stay pretty flat. Big deep breaths. And then the leg goes back to center, the head and shoulders come back to center. I'm gonna to start to roll onto that shoulder that's underneath me. And the hand in front starts to push the shoulder up and I'm getting a beautiful twist right here. If it doesn't feel good, then you can absolutely stretch your legs back out and just go back onto your belly. If you wanna keep going, I'm gonna push into the toe of that bent knee foot and lift the knee a little so that I can stack my hips. Now I've rolled completely onto the side edge of my body. I'm not twisting much anymore, but I can start to lean my shoulder back. Maybe my arm goes back as well. This is a big twist, shoulder opening twist. 
if you like that, stay there. If you want to go one step further, you can bend the bottom knee and reach down for your toes with that hand that's behind you. Reach down for those toes, roll that shoulder toward the floor, pull gently on that foot. You can use a strap here as well if that works better. This is cat pulling its tail. <laughs> it's a little hard to breathe. Take one more big breath and roll slowly back onto your belly all the way long on the mat. Good. You are welcome to simply roll onto your other side. I'm going to go ahead and crawl up to table and switch ends of my mat and I might take a little child's pose in between here as I come up and turn my head around to the other end and come back down. We can always use those transitions. <laughs> Help us get that movement going. Good, rocking a little bit here. I'm gonna reach out with the long arm and start to push into the hand as I bend the knee first. Okay, now I'm gonna lay flat again. Knee bent, everything flat. Good. Deep breath. Adding that banana curve, sliding the foot over toward that edge Sliding the head and shoulders over, take a breath or two, getting the outer edge. And right back to center. Now I'm gonna to start to roll onto that shoulder. I'm getting this beautiful twist in the upper, middle upper back. <laughs> Feels really good right here. Kind of, I'm almost like dragging my hip, but I'm not moving it. My knee is still bent in front of me there. As you inhale, you can really feel the twist engage. If you want to keep going, you could lift the knee slightly off the floor. I'm using my toes as I roll onto my hip. And then the top hand and arm can roll back. Now we've added a new kind of twist. <laughs> if you want to keep going, and you certainly do not have to, this is not a competition. <laughs> this is a care for yourself class. You can bend that bottom knee and reach for those toes and come into cat pulling its tail only if that feels and sounds good to you. Big breath. A little bit of gratitude here <laughs> as we roll ourselves back onto our bellies and relax. You can rock your legs, your hips, make some circles in the air with your feet. We're going to start to crawl back up to table pose. I like to tuck my elbows into my ribs and start to army crawl backwards. Bring the knees together as the hips rise up. And I can move into any variation of child's pose that sounds good for me. You never want to go right into a rounded child's pose. That would be with knees together. That's a lot of rounding after such back bending. You just want to go slowly. If you do, in the end, decide to bring your knees together, which you do not have to do, and then sink the hips back, you're going to get that really big rounding. This is not recommended for osteoporosis. You can keep the knees wide. We're going to take one more big breath in whatever child's pose we've chosen. And then push ourselves up into a seated position, bringing the legs all the way stretched out, staff pose, nice and long. Roll those shoulders, push out through the heels, curl the toes back toward our knees, and just take a breath, maybe even bend one knee and then the other. And begin to just hinge forward at the hips. That means that the spine is long and the legs are long. There's no rounding here. We're gonna get a nice hamstring stretch up the back of the legs. Keep the shoulders rolled back. One big breath. And then release and as you do that pull one foot in front and you can have the other leg stretched out or you can tuck it back behind you whatever is happy for your knees sit up nice and tall we're gonna rock forward and back cat and cow we're coming down here through the movements of the spine again nice deep breaths rocking take a little side stretch see how you're feeling and this should be pretty awkward for your hips. It should not hurt though, especially your knees. You can do this with your legs stretched out wide. You can still be moving your spine, good. Once more to each side here. 
and then we're twisting. I'm gonna turn first toward the back bent knee or to my left and take a breath, try to straighten up the spine, level the shoulders. And then as I turn away from that back bent foot over toward the other side, I'm gonna plant my hands down and lean slightly over. The spine is still long and I might rock the hips a little as I keep walking down the mat until my hips say that's enough of a twist or the low back will tell you. Keep going until you feel like that's the end of your stretch. Walking yourself back up after that deep breath. Let's lean back and switch the legs. Swinging them over, you could also, of course, have this time one leg stretched out. Sometimes one of our knees, usually one of our knees, needs more love than the other one. I don't know why that is. I guess we're just asymmetrical. We're going to rock back and forth. Let's exhale as we rock back. Inhale, forth, and forth. <laughs> Good. Back to center, tip side to side, exhaling on the leaning part of the pose, inhaling as you transition. Notice what happens in your hip when you do this, or both hips. All right, twisting now toward the back foot first, level the shoulders, spine tall, and swing to the other side, plant those hands, start to lean into this side of the twist and let yourself enjoy this little pigeon variation. If you're not enjoying it, please keep adjusting the body until you feel like it's good. It's good for you. <laughs> if it feels good, it's probably a good idea. If it feels bad, it's definitely not a good idea. It's pretty easy. One more big breath. And release. Start to grab your block or your blanket. We're gonna do fish pose. We're gonna really arch that spine open for just a couple deep breaths. I'm, I'm gonna give you this instruction, but you can, instead of using a block, you can use a blanket, a pillow, anything you like. I'm gonna place the block tall wise right down my spine and tuck it kind of between my shoulder blades. Sometimes I need another block for my head. Okay, this is gonna be on the floor. So I like to set up a little, T shape on the floor and then I let the base of this of the block hit right about the bra strap right the middle of the back arms go really wide and I might need to move one of the blocks to support my head or sometimes it feels good to drop the head off the block depending on how high your block is okay here we go you can bring the soles of the feet together knees apart you can stretch the legs out long we're just gonna take five deep breaths right here opening that heart Curving the spine. You can move back into our chakra affirmations. Take a breath in, we say, I am. You can breathe out and say, I feel. You can breathe in and say, I do. We're moving into that core. Breathe out and say, I love, right there at the heart. Breathing in, we can say, I speak, right around the throat. Breathe out at the third eye point, I see. Another inhale, right through the crown of the head. You can imagine we can say, I understand. And as you exhale, just slide the inner thoughts down the spine to the tailbone. One more inhale here. And as you exhale, wiggle the fingers and toes and bring the knees back together and rock a few times side to side and then roll off of your props over onto your side into seed pose. And you can reach back behind you and push the blocks out of the way. And then take your time rolling onto your spine for our final squeeze of the knees into the chest. Good, keeping the right knee squeezed in, lift the left leg up and let it lower slowly to the floor. 
stabilizing the spine here, especially that low back SI joint area. Lift that leg back up and squeeze the knee into the chest. Bring the other foot in the air and let it slowly lower. Lifting it when you're ready, pulling those knees in and rocking side to side. Let the feet float down to the outer edges of your mat and rock the knees gently into that wide knee twist, stretching across the thigh of that top leg as you rock. We're moving into our Shavasana. I'd like to do a five minute Shavasana here and then offer the option of a five minute Chakra Mudra meditation at the end of class. So if you feel ready, you're just gonna slowly come out of movement and move into stillness. And you might wanna put your legs up the wall or stretch the legs down the mat. You can put blankets under your knees, under your head. And settle in, we're gonna have quiet here to breathe. It's wonderful to let the thoughts focus on the breath. It's just really calming for the mind. But you can always let your thoughts float away and bring them back to the breath when you decide it's time for you. Taking a few deep breaths really helps the body to settle. Taking a moment to let the body slowly relax. Notice if there's little places where you're holding on, a little bit of tension here or there, and try to release it on the exhales, letting yourself get softer and heavier. Move into the awareness of lengthening your exhale, letting it always be longer than the inhale. Let's take three more deep breaths here. Extending that exhale still. Maybe even pausing at the end of the exhale and waiting until you're ready to breathe in again. And just bring little movements into your fingers and your toes, maybe wiggle your nose, your face. You can bend your elbows and your knees, putting your feet on the mat, slowly, slowly moving again until rolling over and pushing up. Take your time coming into a comfortable seated position. And I always wanna let you know everything is optional. So you could choose to stay and watch and listen or you might choose to be done five minutes early this morning. We are, I'm gonna guide a mudra for each of the chakras and an affirmation as well, going a little bit deeper into this idea. As you settle, 
Just let your spine be long and tall. In fact, you might choose to sit on a chair or even lay back on the floor again. Our first chakra, our root chakra, the mudra looks like taking pointer finger to the thumb of both hands and then curling the other fingers into the palm. And the palms can face up with the backs of the hands on your legs or they can face down. It's totally up to you. In fact, facing down feels more grounded to me and the root chakra is all about grounding. Take a deep breath in and out, just noticing how this mudra feels in your body. If you'd like to add this affirmation to your next few breaths, the affirmation is fully grounded, I move into life. Fully grounded, I move into my life. Take another breath, smile a little bit. And let the fingers go, bringing the palms to the heart. This is gonna be our resting point, just noticing how you feel. Moving into the second chakra, that low belly place here, we're gonna actually place one hand under that belly, kind of scooping under like a little bowl, and the other hand is going to reach out to the side, ready to receive. And the affirmation here, as you take those deep breaths, settling in, I acknowledge my feelings and live creatively. I acknowledge my feelings and live creatively. Bring the hands back to your heart. Pause for a curious breath. Next, the third chakra right around the navel. We're gonna make a jewel here. Pointer finger and thumb are together, sorry, and they're gonna to touch each other. The middle fingers are gonna to touch each other above, above them. And then the other fingers are all gonna curl into the palms again, and we're gonna point the middle fingers down. So we've created a jewel right here at our belly, right at our navel. <laughs> All right, if this feels weird, you can always just kind of make a V with your hand, something like that. Okay, let me see if I can get it back. <laughs> I love this affirmation. My self-esteem grows as I move with radiant energy. This is where our radiant sun energy right here at our core. My self-esteem grows as I move with radiant energy. One more deep breath. And palms float back together into this neutral hand pose for a moment. Notice how you feel. And we're moving up into the heart. We're gonna do a flower here, a lotus flower. The heels of the hands stay together and the fingers just spread wide apart like a flower. And we let that rest right there at the center of our chest as we breathe. I grow in loving others unconditionally as I learn to offer unconditional love to myself. I grow in loving others unconditionally as I learn to offer unconditional love to myself. Deep breath. Let the hands float together for a moment, pausing here. The next mudra we're going to point right at our throat. So we're gonna have the hand, the palms together again. We're gonna let the fingers cross. The pointer fingers are gonna point up and the thumbs are gonna cross each other as well. We're gonna point this right at our throat, at our, at our voice box here, and we, you can lift the elbows a little, you can rock your shoulders back, feel the length of the spine. The affirmation here is with compassion. I listen and speak my truth. Deep breath. With compassion, I listen and speak my truth. 
Let the hands float together. We're almost through. Our next is called the Trishula Mudra. It's named after me. <laughs> we're just gonna take the thumb over the pinky and hold up three fingers like we're saying we're three, three years old. <laughs> or we want three things, and we're just gonna take them to the sides. These are tridents. This is for the third eye here. Three for the third eye. Deep breath in and out. I see that I am more than I can see. Deep breath again. I see that I am more than I can see. And we're going to skip the palms together this time and just lift the hands, bring the heels together and rest them on our head. Let the fingers go wide. Lotus again. And another deep breath. I understand that the universe is in me, around me, and beyond me, and I am part of something greater. And you might even start to lift the lotus off your head, reaching toward that higher something. I understand that the universe is in me, around me, and beyond me. I am part of something greater. Deep breath. Let the palms come together and down to your heart as we bow to this beautiful moment, to ourself and to each other, saying namaste. Thank you.